The following program contains language, images, and or subject matter that may be objectionable to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Direct from Albany, New York, it's time for The New Media Zone! With your host... This week's new film and DVD releases. And the chance to win free movie tickets with the poster pair game. And now your hosts, Ed and Dave. Hello! Welcome to the new media round. And Dave here. And Dave with you. Along with Jim. Joining us for a look back at 1980. Ooh. Classic year. We graduated. I was a junior that year. I was you in kindergarten. Year? I graduated kindergarten that year. We had a big uh, reunion show last year where we look back at uh, our school days. I see the Farrah Fawcett poster hasn't moved in a year. It's still sitting no. down there <laughs> from our decorations. Does that feature her colon? <laughs> oh. Oh, no. oh, God. Oh, God. Sorry. It, it featured uh, kind of harsh. her points, which will turn up in a film. <laughs> <Her movie>. points. <laughs> Turkey's done. <laughs> That's Mr. Skin's list of uh, turkey timer nipples on the MrSkin.com special list he put together. 57 years old. <laughs> <laughs> years old. Oh, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's still fun to. Um, uh, <laughs> I don't think we. I think uh, 1980 was my cutoff year on growing up because all the humor stems no, no no further from there. But let's see what we come up with here. Uh, the films of 1980. Did we do this already? Yeah, right, right off the bat. I think that kicked in. Uh, I'm a little slow. I missed it. All right, so we're starting with 1980 films? 1980. Let's jump right in to a film that I hated, that everyone else seems to love. The Blues Brothers. I never saw that whole oh. thing. It's sitting in the box over here, though. I should bring that up tonight. And yeah, I don't think you should. Some... I didn't care for it. Huh. Yeah, it's, I don't know. It's, you know, it's... If you like car chases, it's kind of... <laughs> well, it's, isn't that the one is it in the mall, a car chase or something? I love the music, too. Dun, 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 dun. Is that it? Yep. Okay. Number nine, The Blue Lagoon. Oh, famous for a winky uh, and uh, a winky. <laughs> I want to say Is Willie it? Ames, but that was another one. It, Who was that? Oh, uh, yeah. It wasn't Willie Ames. I thought it was Willie there. Ames in The Blue Lagoon. Yeah, he was in Paradise with Phoebe Phoebe Cates. Ooh. And we saw his Winky. Winky. Yes, the Winky. The but I can't think winky. of Blue who, Lagoon. who was the blonde kid in this one. I forget. Uh, I don't know. He was, Christopher kind of like Atkins? Wow. Christopher wow. Two-time winner of the Director's Screen Award. It was something like that. What was that movie? Shockma. Shockma. Shocking audiences. Shockma. <laughs> Shockma! <laughs> I'm sure there's going to be a Shockman clip in here. Starring Christopher Atkins, two-time recipient of the National Association of Theater Owners Star of the Year Award. First for Blue Lagoon, now for Shockma. Also starring Amanda Wiss of Silverado and Nightmare on Elm Street. Ari Myers from TV's Kate and Alley, featuring Roddy McDowell as Professor Sorensen. And Shockma. Shocking audiences everywhere. Shockwave! I have to watch that. Yeah. I wonder if that's available anywhere. <laughs> I have to watch that. Because it's got a monkey. Yeah, no. I love me, my monkeys. And Mickey Dons and <laughs> Davy Jones. Mike Nesmith, by the way, going out on the farewell tour. Oh, no. Which I, I'm trying to go uh, see if I can get some tickets. I saw the Mike and Mickey show two years ago, right before we got struck down. Yeah. By the pandemic. And, as you know, Ed. Right. Was fortunate enough to go backstage and meet and talk with the Mickey Dolans. 
And you got a picture with him. You got a picture with Mickey. You got a nice couple. picture with you and Mickey, and you yep. crop Mickey out for your profile yeah, no, picture. No, I cropped the other guy out. Oh, okay. And left Mickey in. Oh. So yeah, that's a story. <laughs> another, another story time. for another time. But yes, you will believe it. Uh, yes. Number eight, Smokey and the Bandit. Duh. Huh. Because so. everyone loved the first one, they raced out to see the second one, which was crap. But enough people did it, so it's number eight. Right. I wonder if her ass was wiggling too in this <laughs> hot tune. Is that with Buford T. Justice? Is that him? Thank you, nice lady. That was, um... Funny more. Was Jackie Gleason. Jackie Gleason. I guess. Uh, Give me a Diablo sandwich and a Dr. Pepper and make it quick. I'm in a goddamn hurry. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> My father um, <laughs> well, died in 1981, but when he saw Smoking the he loved Smoking the Band. He thought it was hysterical. He loved Jackie Gleason and that. He used to quote that all the time. I don't know why. Maybe he was losing his brain. But he used to he always. Yeah. Number seven, Coal Miner's Daughter huh. with Sissy Spacek. And she did the singing. Yep. A la the wonderful. Uh, Kevin Spacey Ooh. doing the singing when uh, he did the Bobby Darren biopic. By the way, Kevin Spacey making a comeback doing a film in Italy. Huh. They did a sketch on Saturday Night Live last night. It was the Game Show Network, and they were going back in time to the 1990 Hollywood Squares. And, of course, Bill Cosby was oh, on no, it. Oh, no. And all these stars that have been canceled, and a, and a disc idea. disclaimer would come up, say, we can't show this section because of this and that. <laughs> and they had somebody, who they have next to the Olsen girls? Somebody, uh, oh, Jared from Subway. <laughs> the whole show was That's canceled. That's a funny idea. Well, make sure you watch that one. Yeah. yeah. They, they'll have to update it with Matt Gates. Oh, yeah. Number six, Private Benjamin. Uh, I have not seen this film in its entirety. Yeah. With Goldie Hawn, right? And Ellen Burstyn? Yeah. Was it Ellen Burstyn? No. It yeah. Was, is it Ellen Burstyn? No. Yes. Holy shit. It is oh, Ellen Is it Ellen Burstyn? Oh, no. no. Ellie Bergen? El no. The one from uh, on the Murder show. by Death. They are Sam Spade's uh, woman. Who yeah, is that? Yeah, I can't think of her name. No, yeah. But I believe I think she passed away. Yeah, I think it's Ellen, though. Number five, uh, Any Which Way You Can. Now, is this a sequel yeah. or is this the first one? Any Which Way But Loose, was that the first one? Yeah, yep. This is the second one. This is the second one. Any Which Way You Can, Clint Eastwood, and a Minky. Just as dumb as the other one. I mean, where did it come in? Five. Yeah. Five. Geez. Yeah. Number four, Airplane. Oh. Uh, I think this is deserved to be in that. Yeah. Absolutely. Great movie. Uh, number three, Stir Crazy. Um, we bad, we bad. Remember that was their catchphrase in the big ad campaign. Here. And that's um, is that Gene Richard Wilder Pryor and Gene Wilder. Richard Pryor from the Silver Streak, which is I think their best film team. Mm. I don't think it could show that in no. campaign. Wasn't he in the blackface? He's in blackface Martin? with shoe polish in mm. Silver Streak. But Richard Pryor yeah. does it too. He yes. applies the shoe polish to him. So I yeah. wonder if yeah. that would that was Silver Streak. Well, they come out of was that out of the bathroom? Yes, they come out of the bathroom, and he's got the oh, okay. boombox on his shoulder. I think <laughs> snapping his snapping fingers. his fingers, trying to bop it. Oh no! Yeah, I think really... that was Silver Street. Okay. Number two, nine to five. Uh, Dolly Parton, Lily Tomlin, Jane Fonda, Dabney Coleman, piece of crap. <laughs> yeah, wasn't that great? And the good song, the, the but I don't know. It didn't throw me. You liked it, Jim? I five. liked it at the time. Yeah. Again, no wonder I wasn't. Well, there. I also liked the TV show The Incredible Hulk at the time. <laughs> and Mannix. <laughs> and I, Cannon. I never watched Mannix or Cannon, but now that there's nothing on at 2 and 3 in the morning. Yeah, it's now. called sleep, Ed. Go to bed. I should go to bed at 2. <laughs> <laughs> the number one film of 1980, The Empire Strikes Back. Oh, yes. Yeah, great. Yes. To see that. Oh, good for you. Never saw any of them and never will. Huh. So that in the future. Is the microphone able to pick that up when I mumble like that? Yes. Oh. Okay, that's good to know. All right, any uh, oh, films? I have an entire films? huge list of other films. I'm doing this because I don't want product placement. Okay. 
American Gigolo with the Call Me song will be some I'm sure it's in the top ten. The Fog. Ooh, Adrian Bimbo. Yeah. Caligula. Ooh, Caligula with um, uh, Malcolm McDowell. Helen Mirren, Peter O'Toole, John yes. Gilgood. I think there was two versions of this. One was a little dirtier. Yeah. I think it's kind of funny that Peter O'Toole's in it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Saturn Three. This is the oh. one where there was a brief. Fair Fawcett again. Yep. Fair Fawcett topless scene where oh. we saw why she was busting out of those shirts from, from during Charlie's Angels. <laughs> Friday the Thirteenth. The very first episode. Mm. Plenty of fine nudity in that one. Humanoids from the Deep. Do you remember Oh, those? yes. Where the sea creatures were coming up and trying to mate with the women. Yep. Yeah. The Shining. Surprised that's not in the top ten. I think that movie's too long. What do you guys think about Shelley Duvall in that movie? Uh -huh. um, it's like watching olive oil. Huh. She's there's a scene where she's calling somebody on the radio over, and I just want to climb through the screen and punch her. Hasn't and, and, she recently? Has she had uh, like a mental illness? Am I am I not? Is that the wrong person I'm thinking of? I don't know, but she turned up on something I saw recently, and I don't think I've seen her since 1980. And go, oh my God, it's old uh, Shelley Duvall. No, that's what happens when 40 years passes. Ed. I mean, I just haven't seen her in a long time. Can't stop the music. Does that have the YMCA boys in it? <laughs> Village people. Nancy Walker directed this. Oh boy. Steve Gutenberg, Valerie Pride, and Bruce Jenner. In very <laughs> short shorts. You want to tune in for that. I remember Valerie Pride from Steam Bath on PBS. <laughs> right. With Bill Bixby. Bill Bixby, yep. And some brief nudity for TV. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Caddyshack, still popular today. Herbie Goes Bananas, which was you would think was the worst of it because it was the last one, but I watched it the other week. It was kind of enjoyable. <laughs> this, it's just the old stars, you know. Uh, Cloris Leachman was in it. Is Dean Jones in it? Like, he wasn't in this one. Right? By that time? I don't know. Xanadu. Oh. Xanadu. Which is a horrible movie, but uh, had some uh, great soundtrack. Somewhere in time. Oh, I liked that movie at the time. It's kind of dumb now. But I, you know what I really liked was the orchestral music. I think that was John Williams. You must have liked it so much because I think this is the one in the sketch where he had his arms behind him. Doo -doo 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 on the couch. It could be. <laughs> Motel Hell. Oh. oh yeah. Is that wait a minute. It takes all kinds of critters to make Farmer Vincent's fritters. I oh, that. the actor who played in that. What does he did you list his name or no? No. Oh, oh. Rory Calhoun. Yes, Rory Calhoun. Big actor from fifties, sixties. Flash Gordon, which is very campy and popular oh. today. <laughs> and uh speaking of Shelley Popeye. Okay, 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 Which okay. were great production values, but we wanted to see Popeye eat spinach and beat up people, not sing musical numbers. Oh. And crew well, name is Olive Story. It sounds like a lubricant. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Cruising. Oh. A thriller film written and directed by William Friedkin from The Exorcist, starring Al, P Al Pacino, Paul Servino, Karen Allen, a serial killer targeting gay men. Ooh. Particularly those men associated with the leather scene in the late seventies. And here's a fun fact that was in the, the thing I got this from. The title is a play on words with a dual meaning because cruising can describe police officers on a patrol and gay men who are cruising for sex. I, I, was that who lost? doesn't know that? Was that lost on anybody? <laughs> they had to put that in there? I thought you were going to provide us with some information we didn't know. No. Oh, okay. I thought there might be a little tie into the person that started Top Gun, but we don't. Right, yes. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <It's funny. laughs> Same thing. Don't wanna, <laughs> we don't want to go there. Uh, I still like on the Family Guy, Tiny, Tiny Tom Cruise. <laughs> All right, are we done there, Ed? That's it. All right. We're going to move on to the songs. I don't know which camera to look into, so I'm just looking in this one. You look in that one. I will. Thank you. Number 10, The Rose by Bette Midler. 
Don't so well, say well. love. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Number nine. It's still rock and roll to me. By Billy Joel. How about <laughs> a pair of pink sidewinders and a bright orange pair of pants? Now there was a line in there. You, you could really be a Bo Brummel baby if you just give it half a chance. Did anybody know who Bo Brummel was in 1980? I don't know I who he is in 2021. I only knew because it turned up on HBO Max, a movie there. It says Bro Brummel. I said, my God, that's that name from the song. I don't know what the hell it is. Well, he, he was, was, uh, he was an important figure <laughs> in Regency England. And for many years, he was the arbiter of men's fashion back in the 1800s. Oh. Is, you know, all, once again in fashion this year will be black wool suits. And, <laughs> you know, what the Wear a hat. Yes. <laughs> Number eight. Funky Town by Lips Inc. This is the one. Won't you take me to Funky Town? Next. All, all over that. the senior labs that, that song uh, was. Was it? Bringing me right back in there. Oh, okay. Number seven. An awful song by Paul McCartney. Coming up. It's just awful. I'm sorry, Paul McCartney, when he, he did a few good songs with Wings, but he did an awful lot of crap with Wings. Admiral Hosey notified me, he had to have a burper he couldn't get to see. <laughs> Hands across the water. That's a good one. What was that all about? A little catchy tune, I don't know what was going on in here either. <sighs> I had no help from HBO the only, Max. On the that. only song I liked by him was Wings. It was I don't even think of the name of it. I just my was it My Love. My love. That's the only song I really liked by him on and Wings. What about Live and Let Die? Eh, it's passable, I guess. Oh. But he did a lot of stupid crap. Silly love songs. Come on, Paul. <laughs> You're better than that. <laughs> Jeez. Queen with crazy little thing called Love at number six. This thing. Called love. I just. <laughs> Number five. From the Captain and Tennille. At least it's not muskrat love. <laughs> it's do that to me one more time. Do that to me. At least there's no muskrats mating right. sound effects right. in this one. Nobody's doing it to her anymore. Oh, well, they weren't the together. Captain. Yeah, the captain. Well, the captain, they weren't together. His ship sank. Upon his passing. Oh. Number four, Michael Jackson, Rock With You. I off the, off the Wall album. All night. Number three. Right. I didn't know if you had more. You That's more? it. No. Number three, Magic oh. from Olivia Newton-John. This is from the... Uh, from Xanadu? Have to believe it was uh, magic. That was a big one. I remember that all at the end of school and into the summer. Number two. Another Brick in the Wall. Part two. <laughs> by Pink Floyd. How can you have any meat? <laughs> <laughs> you know, eat your pudding. Or whatever it is. How can you have pudding if you don't eat your meat? Yeah. You know, didn't, what was their da Dark Side of the Moon that was like in the Hot 100 for like 20 years? That was one of their albums. Was just yeah. I don't get it. Huh? I don't get it. You don't get it? Yeah, I don't get it. Either. I like the song "Money" by them. Doom, doom, doom. Cheen, like your thing at the store. Yes. Cash register. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, arts and crafts. It's a dollar forty-nine. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's Hobby Lobby. They got a bad system. Number one from Blondie. Call me. Call me. He's from alive. Albany. Call me. That was from American Gigolo. <laughs> Those are your top ten songs in 1980. Ed, anything? Uh, Escape. Pina Colada. Oh, song. by Rupert Holmes. Right. Cars. Not of, by the Cars, though. A lot of experimental type songs. Gary oh, Newman. Gary Newman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ride like the wind. Christopher Cross. Yeah. So why ride like the wind? And there was a sketch on Didn't SCTV. He, <laughs> Did he do the theme oh, from, from Arthur? Yeah. Right? Yes. yes. In the between the moon and New York City. After, but the uh, the SCTV sketch was 
maybe one of my very favorites. <laughs> For some reason, he kept running to the studio, Michael McDonald. Because he was in every it. song in, in yeah. around 1980, <laughs> early 80s, every freaking song had, you'd hear, You'd hear Michael McDonald pop up in there. <laughs> uh, let's see. This is it. This is a rare Kenny Loggins song that wasn't from a movie. I remember them playing that, though, the night of the uh, NCAA men's basketball finals. Like it, This oh, is it. That's a, kind of like Ain't the intro. No mistake, the more love. More King Cards. King <sighs> with more love. Another kind of experimental pop music. Talk about M. Pop music. Talk about Boogie with a suitcase. <laughs> You're living in a disco. With Bob Bromo. <laughs> Tired of towing the line. Baby, I... <laughs> <laughs> I'm you trying to in the line. <laughs> I think I saw you hit your head on the little... Oh, <laughs> I've got a concussion on my skull, baby, 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 I'm feeling fine. <laughs> Rocky Burnett. do, 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 do. I know it's over, but I'm... <laughs> I'm surprised anybody knew of this song. That's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. I think his father was a big uh, the early rock musician. Uh, something. That is oh, all man. the uh, other 80s songs I have. We got some TV shows. TV shows, Top 10 TV shows. The 1980-81 TV season. Number 10! Little House on the Prairie. Never watched. It. Never watched one episode. Did you ever see early, early Jim Carrey? He does an impression of Michael Landon laughing. Oh, it's very yeah. funny. Yeah, I remember, I remember that. that. I never saw that. Number nine, Three's Company. Nope. Coming out of I think this was the, one of the last with Suzanne Summers before she tried to hold them up for more cash. And when well, how many seasons was she on it? Two. Or so three. three. Okay. Then she was held out for more money, and then they stuck her in the, the wrap up at the end, the tag on the phone from where oh, she right. had her. Because she <laughs> had to, it was a contract, right? She was yeah. trying to break the contract, so they decided, oh, you're going to do something, but it's not going to be much. Mm -hmm. Number eight, House Calls with Wayne Rogers, Lynn Redgrave, and David Wayne. Was that a TV show based on a movie? It was. Yes. I have a fun fact if I can find it about House Calls. That's like, it means the same as when the cops, <laughs> oh no, it's different. This is another type of fun oh. fact. Lynn Redgrave was fired from the series following the birth of her new child. She insisted on bringing her daughter to work in part because she wanted to be able to breastfeed Ooh. the baby on schedule. But this was interpreted by the studio as holding out for more money while being disruptive to shooting requirements. Another SCTV thing here. The breastfeeding controversy was spoofed on SCTV in a sketch titled Wet Nurse with Andrea Martin playing Redgrave as a nurse with gigantic breasts solving several crises at the hospital. And Universal replaced Redgrave with Sharon Glass, but previously excellent ratings suffered from the abrupt and clumsily handed transition. I wonder who the daughter was. It was a Natasha Richardson, was it? That's a Redgrave. Uh, is that one of her daughters? I, I don't know if it's Lynn Redgrave or um, who's the sister? Vanessa. Vanessa Redgrave. Well, I think Natasha Richardson is one of their. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. But not positive. Number seven, Alice. Also from a film. Also a show. I what was this watch? Like? Early to rise, early to bed. <laughs> In between, I cooked and cleaned and went out of my head. Don't be life with blinders on, it's tough to see. Wow. I've got to get up, get out from under and look for me. There's a new girl in town and she's looking good. There's a fresh, freckled face. In the neighborhood, well, a new girl in town. <laughs> Dave didn't watch ours. Sorry. It was one of those shows that was between two she others. She was just passing through. <laughs> but if things work out, she's going to stay a while. 
Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> that was sung by Linda wow, Lavin, wasn't that's it? That's really disturbing. That was in my head. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> it came right out there. Number six. <laughs> well, we're moving on up. Uh, <laughs> Said to be one of the greatest TV themes of all time. The Jeffersons? Yeah, because it was catchy and told you all about the storyline. Didn't about that, what about the Beverly Hillbillies? That's another good one. Told you Gilligan. everything. Gilligan. Gilligan. Didn't the woman uh, who sang that pass away fairly recently? I don't know. Is it Jeanette Dubois? Oh, yes. Oh. She was in one of those Jimmy Kimmel Wallona, shows. Uh, yeah. She was also Wallona on uh, yeah. Good Times. Number five, The Love Boat. That theme tells you everything about Love, it. Love, exciting and new. And who's the singer of that theme? Jack Jones. You got it. Come aboard, <laughs> we're expecting you. Bill Star Bixby. Starring Charles Nelson Riley. Oh, 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 Speaking of Charles She's Nelson Riley, uh, before I arrived here today, I was watching The Ghost and Mrs. Muir, but the film. Oh. Was, uh, not The Ghost and Mr. Chicken? No. No. No, not. no never. Yeah. Number four, MASH. Number four, MASH. It was well past its uh, highlight here, I well, think. Well, it right? ended in 82, correct? Yeah. I think February of 83. Oh. Okay. Final episode, sorry. Um, number three, 60 Minutes. That's a great theme. Uh, number two, The Dukes of Hazard. Just a good old boy. Can they play that? Can you play that now with the Confederate flag on the on the on the car? Uh, can, no. you, can you put that on TV anymore? That's or blown they out. To, they have to get rid of it. You okay. see the re-release of the model down there. I've got yes. uh, and uh, they they don't show the top view of the car anymore. Wow. On there. Hmm. And the number one show from 1980. You must know it, Ed. It's oh, Dallas. You got it. Let's see, 1980 in November, that would be where we were wrapping up the Who Shot JR episode. Ooh. And it was delayed for a few weeks because of a writer strike. So we had to wait even longer to find out who shot JR. And we, do we know who that was, Dave? It was Crosby. Right, okay. Um, Not Big, but Big's daughter. Right, Big's daughter. I can't remember her first name, but. Mary Crosby. Mary Crosby. If you remember, that led to a, an SNL sketch that was quite infamous because that was the year they had that really awful cast, the, With the Charles it, Rock. I was going to say Charles Rock, oh. and they did a show where they the whole show was uh, who shot Jr. kind of a thing, but Charles Rocket played the. Uh -huh. Was that the and episode then, where he uh, dropped the f bomb? Yes. Is that? Okay. And Charlene Tilton was the guest host, and then uh. he dropped the f bomb and said, "Who the f shot Jr. Oh, no. or Cr. Because he was Charles Rocket." Right. Charlie, how are you feeling after you've been shot? Oh man, it's the first time I've been shot in my life. I'd like to know who <laughs> 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 CR was unemployed after that. He went out to a. He did have a career afterwards in film and other television. I don't know, did he end up killing himself? Yeah, he's no longer with us. Yeah, I was gonna say. I, I think remember he that. was on the Golden Gate Bridge or something. Ooh. So uh, we will join you next time with another look at uh, some uh, fine old TV shows and music and movies from a year past. And get your hiney checked. The New Media Zone has been a Cable 2000 production.